Hello to the pessimistic, optimistic, and everyone in between. My name is Connor Phillippe, and the Minnesota Vikings are 4-0 right now. Which, if you told me before the season started that the Vikings would be even 2-2 two two at this point, having played the Texans and the 49ers and the Packers with Jordan Love, I would have told you you are absolutely insane. This was just, well, first of all, it was an insane game. Let's just put it that way. The ending was not exactly what Vikings fans were hoping for after going into halftime leading 28-7 to or whatever it was, and we were leading 28 nothing at one point. Obviously, yes, there are issues with the way we played in the second half, and I'll talk about that in a second. But the Vi regardless of what you know criticisms you have about the team after the second half, the Vikings are 4-0. You can make excuses about how we played the Giants. You can make excuses about how we played the 49ers with, without some key pieces. Um, the Texans, though, were, were fully healthy, and we just dismantled them. And now we go into Lambeau, and yes, the way we close out games is lacking, you know, or at least was lacking in this game. But we came into Lambeau, and we shut down this crowd in the first half. And we did put up a lead that was almost insurmountable, and it created a lot of you know opportunities you know for us to just close that game out at the end, even if we did have a rough second half. And the the stat that really stuck out for me was they said at the very end of the game, I didn't realize it was this dominant. The Vikings have only trailed for like three minutes and however many seconds, all four games a season total which is just crazy and, and a big testament to how this defense has really been able to, you know, you know, hold down the fort. Aaron Jones had a great revenge game. You know, he, uh, he ran for 80, I believe 80 yards or around 80 yards. Um, Sam Darnold did throw that interception um, and he did give up that fumble, but the fumble wasn't his fault. Um, the interception was forced and, and obviously any, any, quarterback is going to give up interceptions throughout the course of a, of a game but still you got a, a three touchdown to one interception ratio is still pretty good um and then you know we had a big game again for Justin Jefferson including getting that you know toe toe, toe drag um first down when it really counted um to take some more time off that clock um you know, holding it down on special teams that onside kick made me a little bit nervous but Oliver was able to get on top of it um, and then just overall, you know, the, the, the Packers pass rush came after us in the second half. Um, but overall, like I haven't hated the offensive line this year, which is another key factor, you know, the credit to both of the, off, or the tight ends for really, you know, sticking together and, and playing well with Hawkinson out and we'll have to see even what Hawkinson's role is because, it's still going to be the tight end one, but how expanded of a role will he have considering the fact that he has two very capable veterans um, and, and, and side pieces uh, next to him. Um, so that'll be interesting as well because like we don't even have our full crew back yet. It's crazy to think. Um, you know, Gilmore had a, a, some good breakups. Um, Byron Murphy had some good breakups. Um, and then on top of that, um, it was Bynum that had the, the interception. And then it was just, I mean, it it was all around a great game still in general. You know, like, it, it's not good that we that we relinquish that lead. And Kevin O'Connell, you know, has to make sure that doesn't happen, you know, as, as, as the play caller. Because, you know, the defense has been phenomenal. You can't just completely shift up, you know, the way that this game is going. And maybe Flores was part of it, too. Um but you can't just completely, you know, you, you go from this bruising coverage that really, you know, wrecks the entire offensive line and creates so many problems for Jordan Love in the first half. I understand that you don't want to give up the big, the big play, but if you're going to allow a team to drive down the field and score, you know, you're going to allow them to score. It, it doesn't make much of a difference unless it's the last five minutes of a game. You shouldn't play soft coverage. Um, for a team trying to make a comeback like that. Because even if you they were trying to play soft coverage, they still were giving up big plays. And so just if if you are starting to give up good uh, big plays, then move to the soft defense. But don't just start off the second half 
completely switching up your defense when it's been absolutely dominant at, 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 to a certain point. So, you know, the Vikings, you know, it, it, that second half did look eerily similar to some of the kind of games that we had in that season two years ago where we, you know, um, lost in the in the first round of the playoffs where it was just like close game after close game. We never could close things out until the very end and we had to hold our breath every single game. Um, it, it was looking eerily similar to that in the second half. So, you know, the Kevin O'Connell and this defense and, and Brian Flores in this defense are the most successful when they keep their foot on the gas pedal. You know, the reason why they were able to absolutely destroy the Texans is because they continued that style of defense until pretty much the very end. So that's something that we definitely need to keep doing. Um, but yeah, um, credit to the Packers for even when they did find their way to get all the way back, they still managed to make some really dumb decisions and give the ball up. So thank you to pack the Packers for that and for allowing the Vikings to win this game. Um, certainly could have shifted the momentum back in your way. Uh, had the ball with about five minutes left, and I can't remember even the name of the tight end who did it now. But he, there was about four minutes left. You still have an opportunity to, you know, you know, get a quick score and might not even have to rely on the, the onside kick, depending on how quickly you get into the end zone. And you're trying to salvage every second. You cut back in instead of running out of bounds. Even if he hadn't fumbled it there, that is such a stupid, it might be the stupidest decision of the whole game. Because you're you're giving up potentially 20 to 30 seconds of time in, the, in, in crunch time down two scores. And best case scenario he gained maybe two more yards on that play yeah if he hadn't given up the fumble like what are you doing so so great to see the Packers making some bad decisions there because those are the kind of things that happen usually to the Vikings so it's it's nice to see the turn tabling there um on top of that it's really nice to see the Packers finally having some kicking problems because they it feels like they always have those like fundamental things are always tight with them and they're always they, they never get unlucky with those kinds of things and sure enough here they are, you know, after Crosby um, leaving, you know, they've had some issues with the turnaround. So, you know, they, they missed some key field goals. I don't know if I love the Vikings going for it there on fourth down, because even I understand you pick up one yard and you put the game away, but still like you have an opportunity. There's two, like two and a half minutes on the clock. And you have an opportunity to just run the clock down close to the two-minute warning and kick the field goal. And then they have to, even if they get the onside kick, they still have to go all the way down with hardly any time left and score a touchdown, which is really hard to do. So I, I would have just kicked it there. Um, but I understand Kevin O'Connell's decision-making, especially I did like the idea to sweep it to a guy when I think the entire stadium was expecting them to try and give Aaron Jones his touchdown. So I did like that decision and that idea, but I didn't like the, the, the decision to go for it in general. So I, I didn't like that. But either way, the Vikings end up winning this one by two, a close game, um, and they are 4-0 undefeated. And uh, I believe the Steelers ended up losing. Um, if that's not true, then don't listen to me. Um, but we're one of like two or three undefeated teams remaining in the league. So that's just a great feeling. Um, and I think people are starting to realize that we're not just a fluke team because Sam Darnold made some mistakes in this game and we still were able to get the job done with all the pieces around us. Um, I, I don't want to hearken too much to the 2017 season, but this is kind of what we saw out of Case Keenum's and that team that year. You know, Sam Darnold doesn't need to be amazing. He just needs to rely on his amazing defense behind him and the amazing playmakers around him. Um... You know, especially now that we're adding Hawkinson after the after the buy, just rely on those guys and get te get his teammates the ball. He doesn't have to be magnificent; he just needs to be decent, really. And this team can really still be something special. So, let me know in the comments what you think. But the Vikings beat the Packers, which is always an extra good feeling, and we are undefeated, four zero, atop the NFC North. And I'll just say this now, the week seven game against the Lions is going to be such a good game and everyone should be watching it. So really excited for that. But thanks so much for watching this video. Again, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm sorry that I haven't been uploading very much. I'm trying to get back onto it, but it's been a really busy September for me. 
Um, so hoping to, to get more content out than just these raw reactions, but still happy I can get these out to you. But thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the flip side.